Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about summer driving and some of the dangers and risks involved with summer driving. And Hall Phase is here. And Hall Phase, yes, I really should play the introduction at the beginning of the streams. Uh, I did see that on a Nick Nimmin video on how to do that, and it really should uh, get that going. Uh, 808 Blessed One is here. Uh, Jenny's here. And Corey is here, Bricks for Wheels, and I'd like to thank Corey for moderating and doing the great job that he does every week on doing this. And I owe all of the smart drivers an apology for last week. I had rescheduled the stream for Monday, and life my, my, my life just got crazy, so I didn't show up for that. So my sincere apologies about that. Uh, I'm just going to crank up the contrast here a little bit, so just bear with me for just one moment here while I do that, uh, just to make the picture just a little bit better. There we go. So that should work. Okay. And uh, Jane is here. Okay. So uh, Jamie, rather. I'm sorry, Jamie. Uh, when you're holding the brake when you're turning, you should not be holding the brake when you're turning. That's not a good habit to be into when you're turning. You should brake before you get to the turn and then slow down to the speed that you need to slow down before the turn. So if you're doing a right hand turn, for example, you want to be 10 to 12 miles an hour, sort of 8 to 10 kilometers an hour slow down to that speed first and then turn the corner and you don't want to be braking and steering at the same time especially if you get into winter driving or slippery conditions such as rain or whatnot hail and those types of things because if you're braking and steering at the same time you're going to not have as much control of the vehicle and potentially could lose control of the vehicle so make sure that you're one or the other not both at the same time you are most welcome jamie victoria i'm always looking hovering my foot uh, towards the break too. Okay, uh, there was another part of that. Okay. Um, uh, Victoria, is there a reason why you're putting your foot towards the brake? Are you uncomfortable with the amount of speed? One of the things I might suggest to you is that uh, increase your following distance. That way you're not going to be hovering over the brake nearly as much. Okay, and Corey got the video up there for Bumika. Um, no, you shouldn't hold the brake. There you go. Okay, thanks, Corey, for letting me know that the video and audio are good. That's excellent. Awesome. Okay, uh, Bumika, you're not alone in your anxiety in terms of driving. That's for sure. And if you're anxious in terms of your driving or you have fear or trepidation around driving, one of the things I suggest to you is take it in small doses, okay? Practice driving in less dense traffic areas as your skills improve, as your get more comfortable with your driving uh, then move into greater and greater uh, de traffic density areas okay so make sure that you do that while you're uh, when you're first learning how to drive if you can't even get to that part of driving what I would suggest to you is, is maybe just sit in the vehicle two or three times a day until you get really comfortable with the vehicle because I know there's a great deal of fear and trepidation and particularly uh, not so much with just being able to drive the vehicle but I was talking to a smart driver the other day who was having some difficulty with driving and they had difficulty with the pressure of other drivers. So essentially what I talk about in terms of social driving, they, they were having problems with the social dynamics of driving and fearing what other drivers were thinking about them and felt claustrophobic, particularly when they were getting into roundabouts and heavy traffic uh, left uh, for them, they were in Great Britain, so it would be right-hand turns for us here driving on the right side of the road. It was right-hand or left-hand turns and those types of things. So that's another part that can contribute to the fear and anxiety that we have surrounding driving. So have a look at the fear and anxiety video, and Corey will get that up for us as well. Okay, um, uncomfortable with getting too fast in case another car cuts in or something, so I feel like I need to always be ready to brake. Okay, excellent point, Victoria. Uh, one of the things that you might focus on, and this is one of the, this is a common problem amongst new drivers, is that they're worried about what other drivers are doing. And oftentimes when other drivers cut you off or cut in front of you or do something unpredictable, oftentimes they do that because you're not driving in a predictable fashion. And what I mean is, is that uh, you're driving too slow uh, you don't take the corner fast enough or something like that. And often this results from when you're driving too slow or you're not taking the corners properly and those types of things. Often that results from because you're not focusing on what you're doing. And what you need to do is you need to find something that you focus in on. And because when you're driving, 
it's not to the detriment or the dismissal of other drivers on the road, but you really need to focus in on what you're doing. You need to dismiss what other drivers think. You need to dismiss what other drivers are doing and really focus in on what you're doing. You need to drive the speed limit. You need to make turns correctly. You need to not have your foot hovering over the brake and you need to be applying the throttle and driving at the speed limit or the flow of traffic. If you're preparing for a road test, obviously you gotta drive at the speed limit, but after your road test, what I say to people is, is you really should be keeping up with traffic. That's gonna make you more predictable. That's gonna make you safer on the roadways and it's gonna keep you safe and other drivers are less likely to cut you off and do other things that are going to um, uh, take your space, to, to conflict with your space. Because if you're doing what you're doing and you're doing it properly, other vehicles are going to work around you and those types of things when you're driving. Okay? Uh, Libin, to be three feet away from the curb, shouldn't we be closer? Also, should we turn the steering wheel all the way towards the curb or slowly? Okay, Libin, what you need to do is you need to look at the video on uh, learning how to drive and do the exercises in that video. Because if you can't, if you're, if you're not able to, if you need to figure out how far to turn the steering wheel, those types of things, you're not quite ready to be on the road yet. There's, there's some other fundamental techniques that I would suggest that you work on before you move out onto the roadway and those types of things. Okay? Um... Uh, uh, Prene, uh, how do you center the vehicle in the roadway? Look farther down the road and pick out landmarks that are farther down the road. And, and oftentimes other traffic is going to be driving in the center of the roadway. So if you follow the other traffic as well, if you look for landmarks and those types of things, and Corey will get up the video here for you on how to stay centered in the roadway. And that's going to help you to do that. But, but most important is to look farther down the road and be looking farther down the road because the vehicle is going to go where you're looking. So you need to be looking farther down the road. Okay, uh, blessed one. Uh, okay, I hate that you could be driving on a steady pace, then all of a sudden you do a sudden quick stop. Hopefully the other vehicles don't hit you from behind. Yes, and blessed, one of the things that you need to do is if you do need to make a sudden stop, is that before you make that sudden stop, you need to check that center mirror to make sure that nobody's be directly behind you because if somebody is directly behind you, then you're going to have to make a split de second decision about whether you're going to proceed. So for example, if you're on a yellow light, you're going to have to make a quick, sec a quick split second decision about whether you're going to abort the braking and you're going to proceed through the yellow light or you're going to stop and that vehicle behind you as well is going to stop. So you need to make those kinds of decisions. Okay, Mohammed, uh, do you need to do the right things all the time? Also, a dash cam is important. Uh, Mohammed, you can't do the right things all the time. I'm convinced that you know you need to do the right thing most of the time because we're human beings and we're not biologically able to drive <laughs> at high speeds as we do in cars. And we put in all kinds of other uh, techniques and strategies that compensate for our biological limitations when we're driving. So that's one of the things that you can put in place. Um, there you go. S. James, yes. Uh, too many people drive with the I have to worry about everyone else on the road. How the hell are you supposed to worry about everyone else? You can't control what they are go going to do. Excellent. And, and that's right, James. And really what you need to do is you need to focus on what you're doing. To a certain extent, you need to be concerned about what other people are doing. But many new drivers focus too much on what other drivers are doing and it gets them into trouble because they're always trying to they're they're driving reactively as opposed to proactively and if they're doing what they need to be doing then they're going to be more predictable on the roadway and other traffic is going to move around them and do the things that they need to do and it's going to keep you safer all right okay uh bumika Okay, so Bumika, I would definitely have a look at that uh, video on learning how to drive and do the exercises in there. Work with the pylons, the 36 inch, one meter tall pylons as well. Work with the piece of two by four so you can get the wheels up on the two by four on both the right and left side of the vehicle. Uh, Jenny, when my right lane has a vehicle coming near and I want to change to the right, when should I turn signal? Turn signal right away or after the approaching cars go, then the turn signal. Um, Okay, so Jenny, uh, I want to change lanes. Okay, so Jenny, you want to put your signal on as soon as possible because what I tell drivers, 
Signals are to indicate to other traffic that you wish to move over, not that you are moving over. And oftentimes drivers say this to me, smart drivers say this to me, oh, I can't lane change, I can't merge, I can't do this and I can't do that. And when I'm in the vehicle with them, oftentimes what I say to drivers is, is other drivers don't know that you wanna move over until you actually ask them and you ask them via your signal. So what I, one of my favorite sayings when I say to students when I'm teaching them is, is that turn signals are to tell drivers that you wish to move over, not that you are going to move over. And if you give advance notice to other drivers, they're going to help, they're more likely to help you out. I'm not saying they're gonna help you out all the time, but they're more likely to help you out because they know that you want a lane change or you're going to turn or you're going to merge or whatnot. So you put your signal on as soon as possible. Okay, um, Libin, I've practiced the maneuvers a lot, but I just wanted to clarify what was mentioned in the video since I assume we needed to pull up to the curb and then back up slowly. Sorry for the confusion. Oh, Libin, I'm sorry, maybe I missed, maybe I missed something there, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Okay, Libin, 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 where'd you go? I'm just scrolling through the comments here and having a look here. Libin, are you in California? Are you talking about backing up along the curb there? Just to answer that question. Okay, Jenny, you got it, perfect. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go over, the, over to the presentation. I actually have a presentation tonight on summer driving and I wanna talk a little bit about summer driving and the reason that I wanna talk about summer driving as some of you may or may not know, the most number of crashes in any country in the world are during the summer months and for the, those of us here in North America that are driving, are not in North America but in the Northern Hemisphere rather where we have summer, uh, the, the highest number of crashes are going to occur in July and August here. So I want to just give you some techniques and strategies to put in place that are going to keep you safe during summer and during the driving in the summer. Hall phase, uh, when you are allowed to run away from the police when they stopped you for a traffic. Uh, <laughs> I don't think there's any time hall phase that you can actually run away from the police. You can drive to a safe place to pull in. So for example, if you're on a busy road or you're on a bridge or whatnot, you can drive over the bridge and find an exit to get off that's going to be safer for you and the police to talk to you. So uh, know that, that you can do that. But there isn't any time that you can actually drive away from the police that I'm aware of. Okay, Bumika. Oh, have a good night, Bumika. Thanks for showing up. All the best. Okay, Libin, I'm in Washington. I was talking about backing around a corner. I think it was called a two-point reverse turn. Yes, it was uh, called a two-point reverse turn. And Libin, the other thing that I've heard, I have heard that there are some places that you have to be 18 inches from the curb. Uh, so um, I don't know whether that's true, but Libin, what I would suggest to you is to go and hire a local driving school and go out with an examiner for a practice driving test and they will give you um, uh, they will give you specific instructions about what you need to do to pass the test, uh, the road test in and around your DMV where you're going to be taking your test. Okay, uh, uh, don't teach about uh, X Nilo, why they don't teach about big rig trucks, 18 wheelers and driving schools, like how to behave around them, like that they have uh, football yards. <laughs> All right, X Nilo. This is this is one of the things that uh, you know I have a little bit of an issue with, is that there seems to be this trucker mentality against four wheelers, and this is what truckers call people in passenger vehicles, or trucks trucks against four wheelers. And we've got this big thing, this big war about trucks and four wheelers, right? And this is one of the things that they say all the time: oh, trucks can't stop, and this and that, and four wheelers are cutting them off. And I'm not disregarding that four wheelers do cut big trucks off. I've had it happen to me and I've had them, had four wheelers do goofy things around me. However, to say that they're slower to stop is, is not true. It's simply not true. These big trucks have incredible braking power on them. And I teach air brakes and these big trucks will stop in a very short space of time. So that is a myth that's simply not true in driving. Yes, you should get out and get past the big truck as soon as possible and you shouldn't hang out around them in, the, in their blind areas and those types of things because a lot of times the truck drivers can't see you or bus drivers or anybody who's in a large vehicle, an RV or a U-Haul vehicle or those types of things. So know all of that and that's good information for new drivers to know. 
But to say that they are slower to stop, no. They're a lot slower to accelerate, but they're not much slower to uh, stop than a car. Uh, and, you know, that unfortunately has been proven. Uh, you know, that's just not a, that's just a myth. And any professional driver who's driving a big truck or driving a bus or whatnot is going to increase their following distance. So they're not any professional driver. And I use, I in air quotes, professional driver is a driver that's going to maintain their space around the vehicle because they know he or she knows that it's faster to drive out of an emergency situation than it is to brake. So that's what I'm going to say about that. All right. Yes, exactly, Corey. Bigger bigger vehicle, bigger brakes. Uh, an 18-wheeler has 10 brakes on it. There's, there's two brakes for each axle, so there's a lot bigger. And each one of those brake chambers on that air brake equipped vehicle is uh, capable of, of producing up to... 5,000 pounds per square inch of force because of the way the air pressure works in the system and the work the way that um, in the way that the levers work in the air brake system so there's a lot of braking force okay so there we go okay x nylo thank you for bringing that that's really great I mean that's great information for new drivers to know all right uh, hall phase do do you know what top chase and live chat means? No, I don't know that. Uh, Libin, you're most welcome. Okay, and Victoria's in hall phase. Which comment did I skip? I just said it. Um, there we go, hall phase. There's a lot of crashes on the freeways in any season. No, but hall phase uh, in Australia, in North America, in the United States, in Canada, in Europe, the most number of crashes happen in the summertime they happen in the summer months that's the highest number of crashes uh, when i was asked this question the first time when the most number of crashes car crashes happen uh what season uh, i answered in the winter time and i was completely wrong i was completely it's completely false most traffic crashes happen within 20 minutes of home in clear conditions good road conditions low traffic and the driver is somewhat alert for whatever reason they can't it's inexplicable why that happens but there are more crashes in the summertime so uh, so that's what we're going to talk about so I'm going to skip over to the presentation here and get going on that so bear with me for just one moment here just that didn't work there we go there we go almost ready there we go transition all right so summer driving so i'm rick august phd and i can't answer comments during the slideshow presentation but i'll get back to those uh as soon as we get going here so because i need another screen here to put my youtube up um actually i'm going to try something different here so just one sec no that won't work no i need another <laughs> i need another screen so okay so summer driving uh down to the next slide here there we go for those of you who are new to smart drive test i'm rick august i do have a phd in legal history particularly as it relates to policing and traffic and i went to the university of melbourne in australia uh, between 2003 and graduated in 2006 so i'm an alumni and there's a picture of me here while i was driving greyhound before i went to the university of melbourne to do my graduate degree and I drove buses for Greyhound uh, for a year on what's called the Boomerang Coast in Australia. The Boomerang Coast is between uh, Adelaide, Melbourne, Canberra, and Sydney, and Brisbane. That's the Adelaide Coast, or the Boomerang Coast, rather. And in Australia, 75% of the population lives on the Boomerang Coast. It's like here in Canada, 75% uh, of the Canadian population lives along the 49th parallel. So it's similar in Australia. I uh, became a licensed driving instructor in 1997 in an attempt to get off the road. I was an over-the-road truck driver for most of the 1990s and uh, wanted to come off the road because it's a very challenging lifestyle and I was pretty much done with driving truck at that point and uh, became a licensed driving instructor. My specialty is in air brakes and commercial vehicles, but I also, you got to be a car driving instructor as well uh, to uh, teach that. So not sure what happened there. 
There we go, hit the wrong button. Okay, so summer months. We're talking about summer driving. Uh, obviously we have longer days, more sunshine. So there's more prone to, to a lot more fatigue because we have longer days and those types of things. There's going to be a lot more traffic on, on the roadways and those types of things because as I used to say when I was driving truck, uh, you know, all the goofy people knew to stay home in the wintertime when the weather was bad. In the summertime, they just go out and they drive around and people are driving a lot more miles. There's a lot more vehicles on the road. And this is also one of the contributing factors to higher numbers of crashes. The other thing about uh, summer driving is that a lot more people are taking recreational drugs. Uh, we have the legalization of marijuana here coming in Canada that's going to be an interesting transition for us. More people are drinking and unfortunately, despite what uh, authorities would like us to believe about the elimination or the reduction of drinking and driving a lot more people are still drinking and driving in the summertime and there's a higher number of crashes so I come back to defensive driving and for those of you who might be interested the defensive driving course is on for ten dollars over at my website uh, www.smartdrivetest.com and you can go over and try that out for ten dollars and take the defensive driving course and the fundamental component of defensive driving and driving well is managing the space around your vehicle and that's one of the things that I talk about and it's one of the main thrusts of my defensive driving course so know that that you're at higher risk of being involved in a crash in the summertime now getting ready for summer if you haven't already done this clean your vehicle out clean the inside clean the outside and a cleaner vehicle makes you feel safer and as well make sure that it's in good mechanical order uh, check all the fluid levels, check your windshield wipers and because you can get into th thunderstorms and hail and those types of things in the summertime and you don't want to find out that your windshield wipers are defective or you know, poor quality and they need to be replaced. So check all of that. And especially because we're driving in the hot weather in the summertime, I mean now here in the Okanagan Valley, it's getting up to 35 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So you want to check the coolant level of your vehicle because it's going to be working hard especially if you're on highways and those types of things and as well if you have the air conditioning on as many of us are going to have air conditioning on in our vehicle so your vehicle is going to be working it even harder some of the safe driving habits that you can put in place in the summertime are looking farther down the road and predicting the traffic patterns if you can predict and understand the traffic patterns that are happening farther down the road it will allow you to understand and know the uh, individual road users what they are going to be doing on the roadway and we talk about road users because we have many different kinds of road users we have uh, pedestrian cyclists people on scooters uh, motorcyclists uh, riders on bicycles uh, trucks trams trolleys passenger vehicles there's a lot of different vehicles on the roadway keep your eyes moving while you're driving scanning your mirrors looking far down the road checking your instrument panel checking to both sides of the road figuring out what bicycles and pedestrians are doing on the roadway make sure that other uh, road users and drivers see you on the roadway get eye contact with them leave yourself an out as I said earlier here when I was answering one of the questions always leave yourself an out because it's faster to drive out of an emergency situation than it is to brake out of an emergency situation oftentimes if you're relying on your brakes to stop in the event of an emergency oftentimes you're not going to get stopped also know that most vehicles in this day and age unless you're in some other country somewhere are going to have ABS brakes and that's going to be very different than standard braking and if you don't know how to know whether your vehicle has ABS brakes Corey will put the video up for you on ABS brakes to understand how they work and how to know whether you have ABS brakes on your vehicle and that was important to figure out if you do and I would also suggest you on the topic of ABS brakes, anti-lock brake systems, if you haven't used them, go out somewhere on a quiet road or in a parking lot or something like that, get your vehicle up to 30 or 40 kilometers an hour and then hammer on the brakes and engage the ABS so you know what's going to happen when you get into an emergency situation. Because you don't want to get into an emergency situation and not figure out what's going on with your ABS brakes. Okay? and as well get the big picture so when they say get the big, big picture what's going on 360 degrees around your vehicle what's going on both shoulders of the road are there animals that have got broken out uh, in a pasture or something like that so get the big picture look behind you and scanning and keeping a good sort of bead on what's going around on around your vehicle that video just keeps or that slide keeps showing up I need to delete that okay so summertime we have smaller vulnerable road users on the roadway motorcycles and bicycles 
Uh, and we have some of these people on these recumbent bicycles, that's the three-wheeler, and they're down low. And I find those extremely dangerous. I, would, I just personally would not be on one. But unfortunately, they're on our roadways. And the new road user on our roadways is uh, people with mobility challenges who are on scooters and those types of things. So have a look out for all of these vulnerable road users. And especially at night now, we have... Uh, bicycles on our roadways and unfortunately not all bicycle riders are good riders they don't have lights and reflective clothing and they're going to be wearing dark clothing so have a look at the, uh, for those people especially at night uh, in and around city areas and whatnot and keep yourself safe uh, emergency vehicles there's going to be more emergency vehicles in the summertime and you're going to encounter these uh, so move over to the closer shoulder uh, most places now have implemented move over laws that if these people, uh, tow truck drivers and police and ambulance and fire trucks are on the side of the road, you need to move over to the other side of the roadway as much as possible. So for example, if they're on the right side of the road, you're going to need to move over to the left as far as possible and slow down. And if they're on the left side of the road, you're going to need to move over to the right as much as possible. So the other thing about emergency vehicles is know that they're going to travel in groups. So if an ambulance comes out, maybe 30 seconds, two minutes later, a fire truck is going to come out or the police are going to come out or the search and rescue vehicles. So know that these vehicles are going to travel in groups. If you're on a highway or an interstate, know that you're probably not gonna get over and get stopped. If you are on a road test, you're gonna to need to do that because on a road test, you're not gonna be successful if you don't get over and get stopped. However, uh, if you're driving in regular traffic and you already have your license and the emergency vehicle comes along, just try to move over as much as you can and slow down and let the vehicle get through. As long as you clear a path, then you're going to be okay. Now, if you're sitting at an intersection in congested traffic or something like that, just stay where you are and the, and the emergency vehicle will figure out where it needs to go to get through the intersection. Oftentimes, they'll go out into the other lane right on the other side of the roadway to get through the intersection. But Try not to be unpredictable around emergency vehicles and those types of things. If you're in a roundabout or an intersection, you may have to turn or go through the roundabout and then move over, but you just need to clear a path for the emergency vehicles and know that and whatnot. All right, so long weekend travel. We got lots of long weekends coming up in the summertime. I think we have one almost every month here in Canada and as well there in the United States. And know that traffic is going to be busy. For example, last week I came out of Vancouver on a Sunday. Uh, it wasn't a long weekend, but it was still busy. And you know, you got people who are driving in the in the fast lane, the passing lane, so to speak, and they're they're just not going as fast as you'd like them. You got to take your time, and you got to just hang back, main manage your space, and you know, take some patience because we all get a little frustrated with other vehicles that are impeding our progress, or at least we feel that they're impeding our progress. So manage your space, you know, just relax and take your time and then you'll get where you need to go. Now know that if you're driving in the wee hours of the morning after midnight, 2 a.m. in the morning and those types of things that there is a good, a very high possibility that there could be other people on the roadway who are drinking and driving. So know that as well. Uh, take your time, take lots of breaks when you're on long road trips and those types of things. And if you're going camping and you're on a long uh, it's a long distance and whatnot, take a break every couple of hours, get out, walk around and those types of things. And as I said, in terms of defensive driving, manage the space around your vehicle. Keep good following distance, two to three seconds minimum under ideal conditions. And when the conditions deteriorate, either the weather deteriorates, it starts to rain, uh, there's denser traffic, those types of things, then increase your following distance even more. You can always control the space in front of your vehicle. And I know people are saying, well, other people get in there and they cut you off. If other people move into that space in front of you, they want to go faster than you and very quickly they're going to be gone. So you just reclaim your space again and then you're going to be in a good defensive posturing uh, to, to stay safe. All right, so traveling in the summertime, other things that are going to indicate to you that other people are from out of state, out of province, uh, they're not from where you live. Uh, bumper stickers, uh, particularly rental car bumper stickers, budget, Avis, all of the rental car agencies will have bumper stickers on the back of the car. So look for those. Those will tell you that people are traveling or vacationing in and around your area. Uh, out of state uh, license plates. 
our out of province license plates. Here in British Columbia, we have the invasion of the Reds in the summertime. All the vacationers and tourists come from Alberta and they have red license plates. These people are going to act unpredictably on your roadway because they don't know where they're going. Okay, uh, rental car stickers, I already talked about that. What I should be talking about is uh, travel trailers, toolies, those types of things that the vehicle is packed with all kinds of camping gear and roof racks and those types of things. Again, these people are not probably going to be knowing where they're going and they may act unpredictably on the roadway. So give them lots of space. It's like what we talked about at the beginning with the trucks. Give them lots of space. Don't hang out beside them and those types of things because potentially they could act unpredictably and know that. Okay, and they may be, if their speed is going up and going down and going up and they're not maintaining a consistent space, they may be looking for an exit or something like that. Okay, and the four components of passing a road test are also applicable to uh, defensive driving, speed management, space management, observation, and communication. And keep all of this in mind when you're driving in the summertime to keep yourself safe and not get involved in a crash. And the last thing that I'm gonna talk about here is towing trailers okay make sure you take wide turns you can see the picture on the top there where the driver took the turn too short <laughs> pulled the trailer into the ditch that happens okay know the height of your vehicle and all most fuel canopies are going to be high enough for you get a truck and trailer in under there however some of them are going to be lower and you're going to run into them edges of buildings and those types of things Air conditioning units hanging off the side of the building like to take bites out of big units, RV units, trucks and trailers and those types of things. So know that. Know the height of your vehicle and stay away from overhead objects. And then finally, the problem with this truck on the bottom here is, is that truck is probably not, uh, is not heavy enough to pull that trailer in the mountains. It's probably going to be all right on the flat, but in the mountains, that truck probably is going to overheat. The transmission is going to overheat. It's not going to be capable of pulling a bigger trailer so make sure that your vehicle is has the correct specifications for you to pull a trailer especially if you're going to be running for long distances or you're going to be running in mountainous or hilly terrains here in british columbia you see lots and lots of pickup trucks on the side of the road because they blew the transmission out of it because the transmission overheated because they didn't pay attention to how much the trailer weighed the other thing is is that loaded weight is very different from empty weight on a on a camper trailer you got to know many of these trailers will have a 50 gallon water tank if you fill that 50 gallon water tank that's a difference of 500 pounds and 500 pounds could make the difference between the trailer being too heavy on your truck and there's Corey can put up the playlist here for us on uh, trailers and how to know whether your trailers within weight specs and those types of things but make sure that that's another consideration and I'm just touching on that for those of you who may be venturing into towing trailers this summer okay and then finally in the summertime construction and potholes uh, construction crews know that you have to follow the detour signs you have to follow the instructions of flaggers on our roadways and unfortunately here in British Columbia we've had some injuries and some deaths of flaggers because car drivers have not been paying attention take your time have patience know that we are in construction season and that you're going to encounter construction so know that <clears throat> and then finally animals on the roadway know that this is going to be a hazard at night in this in the summertime uh, particularly here in British Columbia and other places in the United States and in Canada and you know Australia and whatnot there are going to be animals on the roadway so take uh, some caution about that we can talk about that a little bit more in questions and answers here okay so good luck on your road test good luck on your travels this summer have great vacations and uh, be safe manage the space around your vehicle and that way it's, you're, you're going to be okay while you're driving all right so just switch back here just bear with me here one sec and we'll answer some more questions all right there we go okay <laughs> x nilo check the headlight fluid yes that's important on <laughs> for summer travels check the headlight fluids that's funny all right what else we got here all about vehicles hey how's it going awesome welcome back glad you could make it there we go okay there we go there we go cinnamon gum there you go hall face live chat and top chat I still don't know what that is hall face <laughs> I know what live chat is that's what we're doing right now 
Uh, waiting at the left lane on red and the lane you will turn into is one way lane should you firstly make a full stop and then proceed when the traffic light is safe on red. We can only wait. Yes, Jenny, you have to stop on a red light, no matter what it is, before you proceed. Okay, there we go. Cinnamon gum. Yes, so when it is easier to drive on a sunny day, more accidents happen. But when conditions are bad and rainy, less accidents happen. That's correct, Hall Phase, believe it or not. And there's actually newspaper articles. I can show you a newspaper article says that traffic crashes reduced by 75% in bad weather because people are paying attention in bad weather. Uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. It's also, there's also an effect called the rebound effect that when people have safer vehicles, they have power brakes, ABS brakes, uh, you know, power steering, all of those types of things, airbags and whatnot, that they drive faster, they drive more aggressively. And it's called the rebound effect. It's the same, it, it's a similar uh, effect that people who have a house and then they insulate the house, uh, they will turn the heat up more when it's insulated because they think they're gonna save money and it actually negates them putting insulation in the house. All right, Prene, what is the safest lane on the highway, right or left? Are they both the same? Uh, Prene, no, they're not both the same. If, if you're gonna drive the speed limit, you wanna be in the right lane. If you're gonna keep up with the flow of traffic and you need to pass other vehicles, then go in the passing lane. If there's three lanes of traffic, you wanna drive in the center lane. That's the best lane for you to drive in because the vehicles on the right, on the inside lane, are gonna be turning all the time and they're gonna be getting into that lane to turn. So they're gonna slow you down. The best lane to be in is definitely the center lane if there's three lanes. But if you're, you know, if you're driving the, the speed limit, stay in the right lane. If you're driving and passing, then you wanna be in the left lane. Uh, James, when I'm driving on the freeway, I saw a motorbike zoom past me at 200 plus kilometers. <laughs> Yeah, hall phase, that's going to happen, unfortunately. Some of those motorcycles are pretty crazy. Grayson, yes, I came upon a giant boar and it was a busy road. Grayson, where are you that you have boars? Uh, and I'll probably drive around it, but that's me. <laughs> crazy. Uh... Yes, relaxing music for sure. Okay, Cosmas. I'm doing my driving test with a Chevy Silverado truck. The problems I can't see over my shoulder when I'm doing my turn. Yeah, you asked me this question the other day. I apologize, I didn't get back to you sooner about that. No, uh, Cosmos. What are you trying to? What you're you're turning your head too much. You just need to turn your head 90 degrees to look out that uh, window beside you there. That's all you need to do. Just 90 degrees. You don't need to look farther than that, okay? There we go, okay. Uh, Rush Girl, are you supposed to signal in a roundabout? Yes, Rush Girl. Uh, Corey will get the video for you here on roundabouts, but essentially you want to signal going into the roundabout the same as you would with a conventional intersection. If you're gonna turn left, signal left. And if you can, if it's practicable, you want to signal going out of the roundabout. And just a little bit of practice, when you get in the roundabout and you're going left, when you get to the exit that you're going to take just signal right and move out of the out of the um out of the roundabout now you are when um uh, rush girl you're talking about roundabouts here in north america or are you talking about roundabouts in great britain australia or somewhere else just let me know that in the comments there okay uh cory 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 unless otherwise indicated you may turn left from a one-way street to a one-way street on a red light after stopping and yielding the right of way to pedestrian and other traffic. There you go. From, yes. And that is the same here in British Columbia, uh, what Corey said there. Okay. Uh, you're most welcome. There you go. And turn, yes. So I'm taking it, Rush Girl, that you are here in North America. Okay. Perfect. All right, so, and Corey's also put up the video here on how to tow a trailer correctly and safely, towing capacity and whatnot, and uh, yeah. There we go. Hall face, give trucks and huge vehicles a lot of space, yes, and I do, I'm on board with that. If you have large vehicles, RVs, buses, uh, trucks and trailers, U-Hauls, anything like that that has is a bigger vehicle and has huge blind spots around it, yes, give them a lot of space. Get around them as quickly as possible. Don't hang out beside them. Don't hang out behind them. Get by them as quickly as possible and carry on with your life. 
Okay, blessed one, how often do you do a live stream and when do you usually post a video out? Okay, so blessed, this is a great question because <laughs> as some of my smart drivers who are some of my super users know, I've been a little bit absent in the last couple of months and I'll tell you the reason for that. I'm gonna be very honest with you here. I've been struggling with my YouTube channel for the last eight weeks. And the reason for that is in April, I did a video every day in April. It was VEDA, video every day in April. And I worked really hard and it probably wasn't the best thing for me to do to do a video every day. But what happened, what the consequences of that was is that the, video, the, the channel overall dropped off. It really dropped off. But I don't think it was because I was making a video every day. I think it was just the season. Like my, my, my channel has definitive seasons. By the end of August, my channel is just gonna explode because many people are getting their license, they're going back to school, they're getting ready, they wanna get their license before they head back to school and those types of things. But what subsequently what happened was is that I got, it really demoralized me and I just wasn't feeling motivated. And as well, there were a few other things going on. I was trying to redefine my channel. It had just hit 50,000 subscribers. I was doing really well. But I just felt that I needed to do the videos better. And I was getting a lot of feedback from people. Um, I, I did talk to Tim Schmoyer. I, I booked a consulting uh, session with him and I talked to him. And there was some new channel art that came out of that. Uh, there's a new intro that came out of that. And I've been trying to figure out if my channel, what, if what I'm doing is actually working. And I think that what I'm doing is actually working. And my daughter's in the window just over there making faces at me, trying to break my concentration. <laughs> and I finally had a ha-ha moment today. And what happened was is that my, my good mate Alex and I, who were business partners actually, were talking about home and garden shows, these, these, these home renovation shows where they come in and in a half an hour they show you how to completely renovate a house. And you know, my competitor, one of my main competitors is that a lot of my smart drivers go over and see Cameo Pasil's uh, Easy Driving's videos and he's got these little five minute videos uh, that show you how to drive, how do you do things. He does exactly what I do, except my, I'm not the same. I'm very much long videos. I, I go in great detail about what I show you and I realized today in that kind of haha -ha moment that what I'm doing is very different in terms of a teaching style from what Cameo Facile does. And you know, I lose a certain amount of people because my videos aren't five minutes. If I feel that, that the topic that I'm addressing is a longer topic, for example, fear and anxiety is not something that you can treat in five minutes. Fear and anxiety is something very real for a lot of people. It's a half an hour video. And I feel that I'm helping a lot of people by having these longer videos. And so today I had that haha -ha moment. I'm not gonna show you how to renovate a house in a half an hour video. I'm not gonna show you how to learn how to drive in a half an hour video, in a, in a five minute video, because you can't learn how to drive in five minutes. Driving is hard work. It's a, an incredibly complex skill. So finally, after a couple of months of really contemplating what I'm doing and you know, the direction that I want my channel to go. I'm, I'm gonna make my videos better. There's no doubt about that. But I'm also going to continue to do what I need to do. And if a topic needs to be treated longer, I'm gonna give you a longer video. And that's, I think, you know, that's the feedback that I'm getting that it's working and that's what I'm gonna do. And I do apologize that there haven't been videos in the last couple of months, but I think I'm revitalized here and I figured out what I want the videos to do. So, uh, blessed one live stream every Sunday 6 p.m. And there's going to be one video a week on Wednesdays I'm going to put a new video up on Wednesday. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so rush girl is there in upstate New York That's really great and just know rush girl. They do have a few different uh, rules there <coughs> Excuse me in New York. So uh, Cosmos you're most welcome Scott I'm going to be getting my CDL in late August. Is it hard to get a job in the oil patch with no CDL experience? Uh, Scott, it's you can get a job in the oil patch without any experience, but you're going to have to do some work. You're going to have to do some networking. You're going to have to talk to a lot of people to get a job. Uh, I, it can be done. It's not easy. And Corey will get you the videos here on uh, Bill Walker, who's a good mate of mine. Actually, he was a former student of mine. Uh, he went. He finished his course. Uh, with me on a Thursday and the next Tuesday he was working in the oil fields. But I'll tell you right now, 
Bill talked to a lot of people uh, before he started working up in the oil field. So know that you just got to do a lot of networking. Okay, haul phase. Do you think slower speed limits reduce the chance of being involved in a crash? Will it just increase being rear-ended? Uh, haul phase. I don't think that lower speed limits are the solution to crashing. I, as I said, the the, the fundamentals of my defensive driving course. And again, as I said, the defensive driving course is on at Smart Drive Test right now for ten dollars. So you can go and take that. The thrust of my defensive driving course is space management because what I tell drivers: if you are not near anything it's less likely you're going to hit something. So it it's really about space management. I think you can drive at higher speeds, but where people get into trouble is the other two reasons for crashes. The top three reasons for crashes are speeding, following too close, and failing to yield. A lot of drivers think, oh, I have the right of way, and they go. And they and as I say, the, fit, the, the right of way is never taken. The right of way is always given. So a lot of times you gotta give up and let other drivers go. Okay, you've got to give up the right of way. All right, all right, okay. No, uh, Naruto, there we go. Hall phase, <laughs> yeah. Hall phase, it was, yeah. Veda was, Veda was an, a great social experience. Uh, Laura, hi, Laura, how are you? Blessed one. <laughs> <laughs> blessed one it's no I I felt that I needed to say that because the other thing that happened uh, blessed one was last week as well I missed the live stream and I felt really bad about that and I wanted to apologize to all the smart drivers about that because you know I this is this is my job and you know you guys if it wasn't for all of the smart drivers out there this channel wouldn't happen right I can't do this without you and you know I have I take my, that responsibility I take that responsibility very seriously. So yeah, I just I wanted to be honest with you. I want to tell you what was going on uh, because I think I think that's important. Okay, and uh, <laughs> thank you so much, blessed one. And Scott, okay, so you've seen Bill's videos. That's really great. So that's that's basically all you do have to do, Scott. And the other thing I'm going to say to you, Scott, if you're going to do your CDL in the in August and you're going to start working in the patch. Uh, and Bill will say this to you as well, is get your license, uh, start looking for a job in the patch even before you get your license, even before you go to truck driving school because that way you can start talking to people and you can say, uh, you know, if you, when, you, when you call somebody and you start talking to them and, and they say, well, I don't have a job, you say, listen, do you, do you know someone else I can talk to? Because all of these people in the patch, they all know each other, right? And the other thing I would suggest to you, Scott, is to get, get in touch with Bill. He's on Facebook. Just send me a note and I'll send it on to Bill. And Bill's more than happy to put you in touch with somebody. And that way you can, you can start talking to people and you can get a feel for it before you even get there. And if you're going to get your license in August, Scott, I would really strongly suggest that you want to get a, you want to get a, a job in the patch in September because you want to get up there before the fall before you hit the mud you want a bit of experience driving in the patch <laughs> before you hit the mud I'll tell you that for sure okay all right yeah yeah hall phase I missed the live stream last week so I do apologize about that I just I've got a few things going on in my personal life here <laughs> and I missed it so it won't happen again I'll, I'll if if I do uh, if I don't get to the live stream, I'm going to put out a notification and let everybody know that I won't be there for the live stream because I am, I am planning to take a couple of weeks holidays this summer. But anyway, all good. Okay, Sebastian. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sebastian. I love your comment on spacing, Rick. So spot on. Experienced drivers could get complacent in this area, I know, because I have. And yes, and Sebastian... I drive with a good friend of mine, and when he pulls up in traffic, he pulls right up to the bumper of the other vehicles. Uh, you know, and I get uncomfortable when other drivers do that. But I know one thing as a driving instructor that when you're in the vehicle with your friends and those types of things, unless you, unless they're actually paying you, <laughs> don't comment on their driving. <laughs> and especially if it's your significant other, do not comment on their driving unless they're paying you. Okay. So there we go. Uh, key, uh, about to drive on the freeway the first time tomorrow as part of overexposure therapy to get over my anxiety. Any tips? Thank you. Okay, so Key, that's excellent. I'm really uh, happy to hear that you're confronting that challenge and you're working to overcome it. Now, when you get on the freeway, 
do the speed limit on the freeway and stay in the right lane. Now, key, uh, you're in North America somewhere, you're gonna be driving on the right side of the road, so drive in that right lane. Good space management, so two to three seconds under ideal conditions, uh, you know, those types of things. If you are looking down the road and you see other traffic and whatnot, you know, get out to pass and whatnot, but if you're doing this, the, the, the posted speed limit, most of the time you're gonna be able to drive in that right lane and you're not gonna be able to move, have to move over to pass and whatnot. Now, uh, are you going out key with somebody who's a driving instructor or somebody else that's going to help you with that for your first time to get out there? Excellent. Thanks so much, Scott. I'm glad that you're watching the videos and you're getting going here. And Scott, if you need any help with anything or there's anything that you're not having, you're having some challenges with in terms of getting your CDL license, uh, for sure, let us know here. All right. Okay, Cosmas, uh, one more question. Can the tester pull you out from the parking spot even if you don't complete your parallel parking? He has to let you complete your try. Uh, Cosmas, uh, yes. They're, they, they're gonna let you finish your try in terms of your parallel park. Now, one of the things that I say in the parallel park video is that if you hit the curb, you're not gonna fail. Now, what I mean by that, let me clarify this because I've had a few comments from smart drivers. If you touch the curb, and you know that you touch the curb and then you pull forward and you correct, you're not gonna fail on that point. However, if you, if you really hit the curb, then you're gonna fail. If the, if the body rocks on the chassis, you've struck the curb. If you strike the curb, you're gonna fail your road test. If you push the back tire up over the curb, you're gonna fail your road test. But if you just touch the curb and you know that you touched it and then you pull forward and adjust, you're not gonna fail for that, okay? You'll lose a couple of points, but you're not gonna fail. Okay. Okay, Key, you're going to drive with your friend. That's really great. So you got somebody else to go that's going to give you some, some support and those types of things. So uh, Key, what I suggest to you is just ask your friend, unless you have specific questions, just ask your friend to not say too much to you and let you focus on what you're doing and those types of things. And again, if you become overwhelmed, Key, just get off of the next exit, you know, stop the vehicle, take a break, get out and walk around and then, you know, have another go at it and whatnot. But anyway, and definitely, you know, let me know how that goes because it'd be really, you know, Hope that it goes well for you. I'm sure it will. Okay, uh, Dorcas, thanks for all your tips. You're most welcome. Uh, Hall phase, also the semi trucks videos. Are you still going to do that? Yes, I am going to do that. Hall phase, I'm going to get going on that. <laughs> I'm 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 regrouping after a couple of months of just really, you know, stepping back from the channel and whatnot. Excellent. Hall phase, drive motorcycles. Yes, we're going to get going on that. Uh, yes. Thank you, Hall Phase, for helping me remember all the stuff I need to redo. <laughs> and the other thing on that point, Hall Phase, of that video on the motorcycles that I'm going to redo, I'm going to start redoing some of these videos because now that I've learned more about how to do videos and how to do videos better and, you know, trying to reconsider all of this stuff about what I'm doing and what my competitor, uh, Cameo Facile, is doing, I can incorporate some of the stuff that he's doing and make my videos better. So uh, I'm going to sort of, you know, come up with a new meld and I'm going to improve. So yes, all of that's really great and we're going to get all that done. That's really awesome. All right. So Key, you're in California. Yep. You're going to do great. So just stay in that right hand lane and let us know how it goes. It's going to be really great. Uh, Scott, I don't actually have a school. Uh, I teach all my stuff online. Now, where are you, Scott, in uh, Canada? That are you in Canada? Or are you in North or in the United States that you're going to be doing your license, Scott? Uh, just let me know that, and I'll be able to give you more, a little bit more information about where you're going to do and those types of things. Yeah. So we're just going to start winding down here. We're getting close to the hour in terms of finishing up. Okay. Um, Now, just uh, CDL licenses, most of the time it takes sort of four to six weeks to finish up a CDL license. Uh, that's about the time that it takes for you to learn the, the five basic components of driving. You've probably seen the video, but the five basic components of a tractor trailer license are uh, turning, pre-trip inspection, <clears throat> shifting, hook and unhook, and then backing. And those first three are the real major components, the turning, uh, pre-trip inspection and shifting. Those are the three biggest challenges that you're going to have when you go to learn how to drive a tractor trailer. And then the last two are the minor components, which are hook and unhook, couple and, and uncouple, and then um, backing up. 
and the backing up is going to depend on which licensing center you go to because it, it, there's different requirements for different licensing centers. For example, when I worked in London, Ontario, they had to back around a corner on a right on a right turn, so it was on the on the site side of the truck. Uh, here in Vernon, British Columbia, they only got to back up straight for 100 feet. And when I was in uh, Victoria, British Columbia, they had to do a parallel park. So it depends on which licensing center you're going to on how difficult the back is up. So it's going to be different in different places. All right, Anita, when you get your license, how long should you drive on your own? Um, sorry, Anita, I'm not sure what you're asking me. How long should you how long should you drive uh, before? before you go for your license is that what you're asking me Anita? okay so scott so you're in new brunswick so scott is what's going to happen in new brunswick there is yeah it's probably going to be four to six weeks depending on the course that you're going to be taking i don't think that the they haven't brought the truck driving rules into new into new brunswick that they've brought into in canada or in ontario rather in ontario they brought it up to like 100 hours or some crazy number that you have to go to driving school so i think it's a little bit different okay uh, Laura, yes, definitely night driving tips and Corey will get the video for you on night driving, but just quickly on night driving, one of the things that you need to know, Laura, the farther you get away from cities and urban areas, the less light there is going to be, less ambient light from street lights and buildings and those types of things, so the more reliance you're going to have on your headlights. Look for markers at night, so there's lots of reflection, uh, reflective markers along the roadway that are going to guide you, spe uh, um, specifically on busier roads and those types of things. Most of the time traffic is going to drive on the roadway, so follow the other traffic. Look for traffic signs because most of the time traffic signs are going to be reflective and they're going to be near the roadway, so that's going to be able to help you to find the roadway at night. As well, look for at the geography. If you're driving through wooded areas, look up at the sky. Just like glance up at the sky and you can see the tree cut where the roadway is cut through the forest and you can find out where the roadway is going at night as well. So uh those are some basic techniques as well uh turn your dash lights down as much as possible because we all have night vision our eyes become accustomed to night driving and if you turn the dash lights down that's going to uh, cause uh it's going to reduce the amount of fatigue on your eyes so do that as well and there's the video Corey got that up for you so have a look at that uh blessed one yes i'm definitely going to do a replay I, I put all the videos up so it usually takes a couple of hours before youtube processes the video and then i put it up for you to have a look at okay you are most welcome laura all right so scott if you're already used to driving with a big fifth wheel that you're going to be uh leaps and bounds ahead of the sort of the the pack in terms of driving a truck and trailer because you're already accustomed to backing up a trailer and all of the skills and techniques of backing up your fifth wheel apply to a truck and trailer, a tractor trailer unit. It's just the bigger unit and you need more space and those types of things. But you, you're already ahead of the game because you already know how to use the mirrors. You already know all the skills of backing up and those types of things. So all that's going to help you out. Uh, <laughs> hall phase. Uh, when I head out to Ontario this summer, I'll definitely look you up hall phase and we can have a go in the, in the big truck and we'll, <laughs> we'll get you going there. All right. <coughs> so... Yes, and there you go. So Bricks for Wheels, as, as Corey said there, all of the um, live streams, there is a playlist for Smart Sunday, and all of the live streams are here, and they're all archived on the channel here, so you can definitely have a look at those. And uh, I'm going to do a better job of getting those cataloged and actually putting, when I put the presentation in, where that starts and where that ends. So people, it, uh, the longer videos, I've always put the uh, menu items down in the description, so you can just click to the certain parts of the video. For example, the fear and anxiety video, which is a half an hour, and it's uh, eight tips on reducing fear and anxiety. Each one of those tips is in the description, and you'll find that all the longer videos have a table of contents that you can skip to that part of the video. Okay, so know that for the longer videos on the channel here. All right. Uh, oh, okay. Anita, um, when you get your driver's license, uh, what I would say is just as soon as, you know, within a couple of hours, you can start driving on your own. I do strongly uh, uh, encourage you to let somebody else drive you home after you get your license because you're all excited and you're ramped up and you may not be paying, to, paying attention to your driving as much as possible. And actually, we had a rule in the driving schools that after students passed the road test, uh, they didn't get to drive back from the licensing center. And I'll tell you a story about that. <laughs> I took this student down to 
to get his road test. And I actually hadn't trained this student. I was just taking him down to the, the, the licensing center and he did his road test and he was in the fire truck cause he was, uh, working for the volunteer fire department. He was volunteering. So I didn't drive the fire truck back after he passed his road test because I thought, well, you know, he's driving the fire truck and I better not drive the fire truck, blah, blah, blah. So we come back drive back to the fire station. We drive around the back of the building. We come up to the front. He pulls up in front of the door where he's going to back the truck in. He puts it into reverse and backs up and proceeds to back into the door. <laughs> this gets better. So I said, well, oh, that didn't go well. So then he pulled forward and he went, oh, I forgot to open the door. And he pushes the automatic garage door opener. <laughs> so yes, it's never a good idea to let students uh, who are successful on the road test drive home immediately after passing the road test because they're not completely there. Okay. And it's not exactly their fault. So there you go. Anyway, so Anita, yes, just take a couple hours, go home, have a celebration, uh, you know, and maybe later that day, you know, you can go out and drive on your own and those types of things. But if you've got a little fear, a bit of fear and anxiety about driving on your own, definitely drive on the back roads, definitely drive in places where you have uh, less traffic and those types of things until you get more comfortable and you feel more comfortable with your skills and those types of things. So there you go. Okay. So hall phase, you're going to get a video this week on Wednesday. I promise I will get one up on Wednesday for you. And we're going to get going here on this again. We're going to get back on the channel. We're going to get going because there's lots of people who are going for the road test, lots of people learning how to drive and lots of people want defensive driving and all of those types of things. So we're going to wrap it up there. And again, for anybody who's interested in the defensive driving course, I got it up over at my website. It's on for $10 right now. You can go over there and pick that up. And as well, uh, I'm working hard to get the Air Brakes Explained Simply book up. And I've got it in with the graphic designer. Next week, it's going into the proofreader. So I'm hoping that the Air Brakes Explained Simply book will be out by the end of July. And that's what we're working on. So that's everything. And I do really appreciate everybody having, you know, supporting me and reminding me and getting me going all this stuff. Okay, Scott, I said something. You said you have a PhD. What subject? Uh, Scott, my PhD is in legal history. So it's in uh, policing. So legal history is the study of courts, prisons, and policing. And my area of expertise is policing specifically as it relates to traffic, oddly enough. So, and so you could kind of say that it's in traffic safety. So that's what my PhD is in. I went to the University of Melbourne. So um, it's interesting. I, I'm that nerd that gets really excited about traffic and, and driver behavior and road user behavior. So I really say that my expertise is in road user behavior. And I do a fair bit of post-crash analysis as well. That's the other thing that I do. Okay. Uh, do you know any smart drivers who drove in the 1970s? Uh, actually, Hall Phase, I do get a few people who drove in the 1970s, some truck drivers and whatnot who talk about uh, driving the old five and fours and whatnot. So yeah, <laughs> Kodo Trucks, hi there. Anita, thanks. So thank you everybody for showing up tonight. Congratulations to everybody who's passed in the last couple of weeks. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, definitely check out the map of success. I don't know why it took me so long, but now everybody who's passed the road test and tells me that on the YouTube channel, I have a map of success. I put them on the map. And last week I was, it was, I was really excited because we had somebody from Taiwan. Uh, and, uh, we, we've also had somebody from Iceland. So it's been very exciting. And lots of people in North America who pass road tests in Hawaii and whatnot, but it's really great. So last week we had somebody from Taiwan and they're on there as well. All right. Okay, so yes, and there Corey's put up the link for the defensive driving course. Good night, Hall Phase. Have a great, great night, and uh, good luck to everybody who's passing up. Key, good luck with driving on the freeway tomorrow. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.